Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome back to another episode of Hard Times, where I explore recipes and food from times of hardship. Today, I'm going to be making Navajo coffee. And this video was inspired by a video I found here on YouTube made by Sierra Johnson, and I will put a link down below to her original video. So Navajo coffee is coffee that has been thickened with toasted flour. Now this is something that Sierra grew up with, her grandfather made it, and she hadn't had it in a long time and decided to make a video about it. And it sounds so interesting because the consistency of the coffee is unlike any kind of coffee I've ever had. The coffee is in fact so thick, it's almost pudding-like. So Navajo coffee is coffee that has been thickened with toasted flour, but a very specific brand called Blue Bird Flour. So I knew when I was gonna take a trip to the Southwest with my family, I knew I had to track it down and look what I found. Here it is. Look, have you seen such a beautiful sack of flour in your entire life? I have not. It is so beautiful. I love it. So this is a five pound sack of flour and the flour is still packaged in cotton cloth. Bluebird flour is made by Cortez Milling Company and they're based in Cortez, Colorado, but it's very, very popular in the Southwest. And I actually found this in Arizona and in all places in the Grand Canyon <laughs> General Supply Store, which is kind of great. I went to a supermarket and they didn't have it, but they did have it at our national park, the Grand Canyon. If you have never been there, words can't even describe how just breathtakingly spectacular the place is. It's just, it's just amazing. And to think that at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, those rocks represent rocks that were on this planet two billion years ago, it's just, your mind just goes super, super cool. Super great to share with my kids. We hope to go back. We would love to spend more time there. We were only there for a couple days, but yes. Oh, while I was there, I also picked up this, the Grand Canyon cookbook, and I hope to do some recipes out of here. Lots of great little pioneery, kind of almost old fashioned -y kind of recipes. So bluebird flower is regional. I have never seen it out on the East Coast, and it's very popular in the Southwest, and particularly among native people. This flower is also very popular for making fry bed and tortillas, which I would love to tackle as well. I also picked up some mesquite flour, so I'm thinking I could make some mesquite flour, bluebird flour tortillas. So if we look on the back here, there's nutritional information and it says it has four grams of protein to 60 grams. And that works out to be about 7% protein, Ooh. which is less than all purpose flour, which is around 10 or 11%. So this is a little bit more like cake flour, a little lighter, a little less gluten. So you're gonna have less chewier of a bread and more of kind of a lighter bread. So really great for cookies, cakes, and tortillas apparently. Let's get ourselves a skillet and we're going to toast our flour. Pour in some flour. The amount isn't very important, we just want to toast some. Using a wooden spatula, we're going to just keep stirring this because we don't want it to burn. And that's all we're doing. We're going to toast this until the flour takes on kind of a peanut butter color. So this is kind of like making a roux, but there's no fat. So a roux is a combination of flour and fat, sometimes oil or butter, that's cooked over heat until it gets a really nice caramel color. Sometimes you get roux that are very, very dark, and they're used to give flavor to dishes like gumbo or even soups. It gives it a really great nutty flavor. So that's what we're going after. We want a really nice nutty flavor. So this is already starting to toast, and it's giving this really great smell of kind of toasted or baked bread. It's really nice. So keep this going. So after about 10 minutes, our flour looks like this. It's got a lovely kind of garbanzo bean color, a little bit lighter than peanut butter, but you can really see a difference when you compare it to the flour that hasn't been toasted. I'm gonna transfer our flour to a bowl. Now I'm gonna make my coffee. And I'm gonna just add my water. We had to buy a new kettle because my other kettle broke and I'm really happy with this one. I love that it has variable temperature and this little gooseneck pour spout. It's really, really nice. Nice little treat. I just hope it lasts a while. Our last one lasted about five years. I really wish things were made to last longer than just five years. 
So while the coffee's brewing, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more background about this particular recipe. Now in Sierra's video, she said that she didn't know exactly the origin story, only that her grandfather made it and that the flour actually came from rations that were given to the Navajo people. Now this part of history is recorded and is quite a sad one. From 1864 to 1866, the Navajo people were relocated from their lands of Arizona to New Mexico. This is also called the period of the Long Walk or the Long Walk of the Navajo. So the Navajo people, or the Diné, as they call themselves, were given rations from the U.S. government that included flour and coffee. These were ingredients they were not familiar with, but out of it came recipes that are now a large part of the culture, including fry bread, which is just quintessential. When you go to any kind of powwow, you will always find fry bread. So I'm super excited to actually use a bluebird flour to see if that changes the flavor and the texture of the fry bread. I suspect it does because of its different level of protein. So a very sad time in history, but I think it's still important to remember. Okay, let's check on the coffee. And now we're just gonna simply add our toasted flour. Now Sierra says you can add as much or as little as you like, and she remembers eating it very, very thick. She calls this kind of like a Navajo creamer. So it makes your coffee richer and thicker and it's already changed the color of the coffee. It's much lighter and the consistency as well. I'm super surprised that it's not creating any lumps. Kind of amazing. They always tell you when you're thickening sauces to add water to your flour or your cornstarch to prevent lumping. And while I am getting some lumps, they're melting away. Ooh, I can smell the toasted flour. It smells really nice. It's like toasted bread. So that's after three teaspoons and it's got more of a almost gravy-like consistency. Sierra also added some sugar in her recipe. So I'm gonna add some as well. I don't usually add sugar to my coffee, but I think in this, it's gonna make a difference. Look at that. Look how luscious that looks. Okay, I'm gonna just taste it like this just to get an idea of what this texture is like. Cheers. Ooh, wow, it really changes the flavor of the coffee. It's less bitter, but I'm not sure if that has to do with the flour alone or just the sugar. I imagine the sugar has something to do with it. But the consistency is really nice, almost like a soup, and a lot like hot chocolate. So from what I've read, the longer history of this drink might come from Mexico, where they have a drink called etole, which is used sometimes with mesquite bean flour to create a hot, thickened beverage. Or from a drink called champurado, which I've made a video for, in case you've missed it, I'll put a link down below, which is a hot chocolate thickened with corn flour and has a very similar consistency. Sierra takes this farther, and she adds about another four heaping teaspoons and gets this super thick. So let's keep going. We're getting there, look at that. So the more flour we add, the thicker it gets. And I think I'm gonna add a little bit more sugar. So far I've added about a quarter teaspoon. I'm gonna add another quarter. And look how thick that is. It's beautiful. And I'm gonna add one more. So, so far it's been about six teaspoons of flour and look at that consistency. Look at this. I've never had coffee like this before. It is so, so thick. All right, let's give this a taste. Here we go. Itadakimasu. Wow. The coffee flavor really changes with the addition of the toasted flour. The consistency is hot and thick almost more like a cream of wheat or porridge, really smooth. There's some bitterness, but not much. The toasted flour has a lot of nutty toasted flavor to it, but because the consistency is so thick, I don't at all think coffee. I would have loved to taste this without knowing it was coffee to see if I would even know that it's coffee because it's changed so much. It reminds me a little bit of coffee that you can find in Louisiana that chicory has been added to. It's coffee-like, but a little bit different. And because I added some sugar, it's more like a dessert almost, but still not very sweet. It's very comforting, but unlike any, any other coffee I've ever had, in fact, 
if this was served to me, I don't know that I would know that this is coffee because the consistency is so kind of puddingy and porridge-like. There's definitely still a bitterness and indications that there's coffee in here, but that combination of toasted flour, a little bit of sugar and coffee completely changes this. Amazing. Alrighty, so there you have it, Navajo coffee. I hope you guys enjoy that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. <laughs>